Game Geek here with Mark from Magpie Games. How are you doing, Mark? Good. How are you, Steph? Doing well. Thank you. And we get to look at wizard kittens today. Are there by chance cats in this game? <laughs> there, are, there are a few kittens in this game. No, no cats, of course, only kittens. Uh, just, well, just kittens. I, actually, okay. there is one cat, which we'll talk about, Professor Whisper, um, who wants to catch these kittens up to no good. So, um, so there are a few, I suppose. <laughs> Excellent. So give me a little bit of overview. How did you come to, to bring on wizard kittens and, and what, what gave the, you know, the inspiration, if you will, to publish this? Yeah. Game? So, so we, we've been publishing uh, role-playing games and, and other uh, non-card game titles for years, uh, but we wanted to start making card and board games because we, we love them. As you can see from my wall of games back here, <laughs> we play a lot of games. Um, and one, one day we were talking about, well, what kind of games would we even make? And one of our co-founders, Marissa Kelly, said, oh, we should make something cool like wizard kittens, just like as a joke. And myself and Brendan, our other co-owner, both looked at her like, that's genius. What? Tell us more. What are these kittens doing? What's, what's going on with them? Uh, and so we felt like almost obligated, like, you know, when you find a, a rainbow in your backyard, like to go to the end of it and find, you know, wh where does this lead, right? Because wizard kittens was such a gripping idea that we had to make a game for it and make it real. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I love that. Um, so how many people does this play? About what age and how long and everything? Tell me. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's a family-friendly, uh, semi-cooperative set collection game. So it, it'll play down to five or six years old if you, if you take out all the complications. But we're big fans of little dials. So there's a lot of things where you can make it a little bit more complicated, a little bit more strategic. Um, so we're looking at a pretty wide age range of, uh, of players. Um, the time for it, once you get it up and running, is probably 15 to 20 minutes. First time through, probably half an hour, just to get the rhythm of everything. Um, but it's supposed to be a fast game. It's supposed to be, uh, you know, quick paced. And there's a lot of twists and turns as the kittens try to crush and defeat and banish the curses that they have accidentally let out of the library. So they what? have these spell books that they can put the curses back into but they've got to collect the right ritual ingredients. So you've got them there, but these ritual ingredients, artifacts, scrolls, uh, you know, familiars, um, these adorable familiar cards, um, all of which will help them put the curses away and escape uh, detention. But if over the course of the game, they can't collectively get rid of all the curses, they get caught by Professor Whisper. And Professor Whisper is uh, eager to put these kittens in detention and prove that they have uh, been up to no good. But hopefully the kittens will be able to get rid of all the curses and get away clean. Now, of course, if uh, they don't get away, it doesn't mean there's no winner. It's a semi-cooperative game. So if they get caught, the cleanest pause clause applies, which means that the kitten who has the least guilty look, the one who is most likely to be able to escape punishment, is the one who wins. So there's a little bit of trying to shoot the moon here as you play the game, deciding, can I win by getting all the points if we're going to finish all the curses, or do I need to win by making sure we don't finish the curses and I'm the least guilty kitty? Interesting. Okay, so let, let's go with, like, let's do a sample round if we can, because sure. I want to see uh, how, sorry. like, everything kind of works and meshes. <laughs> great, great, yeah. So first, each person gets a kitten card. So you've got uh, a bunch of them laid out there. And the kitten card has um, a number of spells on it, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, each kitten starts off being pretty much the same. So there's Grumpkin. He's got, uh, you know, a little bit of a grumpy face. Uh, and when you look at the kittens, they have two sides, a basic side and an advanced side. So uh, the basic side just has the same four spells that everybody gets. The other side, uh, if you flip it over one more time, you can see that there is a special spell that's just for Grumpkin. But today, let's just do the simple one. We're just learning the game, so let's start with the basic side. Um, each turn, what's going to happen is that Grumpkin's going to draw one card from the Ritual deck, which is this deck of Ritual components. And then he's going to place one of those cards into one of the three chapters that he has uh, in his spell book. Now, the third chapter starts closed. So you can see that chapter's closed where it's not open yet, but the first two chapters are open for him to put the, the various components in. And those need to match up with the curses that go up in chapter one and chapter two. 
So as we open the game, let's go ahead and put two of those curses out there. Um, they're drawn from the curse deck. They're a varying difficulty. And we'll put one in chapter one and one in chapter two. Now, the first curse that we've drawn here is the Balloon Kitty curse. Uh, and the second <laughs> one is the Possession curse. Now, the Balloon Kit curse is it's a great oh starting God. curse. It's a simple curse. It's worth five points. You can see up at the top left corner, it's a five victory point condition card. And in the, in the row, there are three symbols. And those symbols tell us what things we need to put in that chapter to break that curse, banish it, and put it away. Okay? So you can yeah. see the balloon curse is pretty simple, just three artifacts, or, or sorry, three uh, ritual components. The possession curse is a little more complicated. It needs four potions, which is kind of tough to get all in one place. And it's only worth two points, but that's because it has a special clause at the bottom. You score two additional yeah. points for each curse your opponents have defeated, which means that if you're, if you're behind, uh, then maybe you can catch up by getting a card that's worth a lot of points if your opponents have curses, right? So let's put those back in chapter one and chapter two, respectively. And now we're going to see where is Grumpkin? Well, he's got an artifact and a potion. That's actually a pretty good start, right? He needs one familiar and one, uh, uh, one additional potion in his first chapter to break that first curse, right? And so we're wow. going to draw from the ritual deck and we want to put them in the, uh, they were back in the opposite order. Uh, the artifact was in chapter one, right? and the potions in chapter two, perfect. Now, ah. he needs to get all of the elements in chapter one, but they can be in whatever order. There's no order here, it's just the set that he's trying to collect, okay? So let's grab our ritual deck, which is, like I said, filled with all those ritual components, and let's just draw one card from it. And that's gonna be the card that Grumpkin gets this turn. Um, let's let's set that card aside, that's, that's kind of a special card. It's supposed to be shuffled into the middle of the deck, that's fine, we, I wanna show it, so that's perfect. Let's grab, uh, one more regular artifact or potion or scroll. Put all those, <laughs> other cards, all those other cards aside. Perfect potion. Okay, great. So Grumpkin gets to choose. Do I want to put that potion in chapter one or chapter two? Now, chapter one doesn't only needs one potion, right? So that's a great place. We might put it in chapter two because it's got four, but that's like a long way away, right? Let's put it in chapter one right. because in addition to playing a card, Grumpkin also gets to cast a spell. So let's take a look at Grumpkin's card one more time and look at those spells. The first spell is the one we're probably gonna cast this round. It's called Summon. And when you cast Summon, you get to draw another card from the deck. So you summon up one more ritual component and see if it's the one you need, right? For the second spell, it's Sling, which is to throw a card from your pile into another kitty's pile. Well, that makes that kitty look guilty because remember, the kitty with the cleanest paws wins. Well, cleanest paws, if we get caught, means the fewest ritual components. So this takes a ritual yeah. component out of my space and puts it into somebody else's. Or it might give someone a card they need to complete those curses, right? Because we're kind of in this together, kind of. So <laughs> I might want to give another kitty a card to help them. Um, SWAT gets rid of two cards. And again, that's great if I'm going to have extra cards in one of my recipes, which we'll talk about will count against me, or if I want to get rid of cards because I want to have the cleanest pause, and then finally switch, which would switch any two cards on the board uh, from chapter one to chapter two, from your chapter one to my chapter one, from your chapter two to my chapter two, any two on the board. But there's yeah. one catch here. You can never cast the same spell twice in a row. So Grumpkin's got a really cute little uh, spell token with a little paw on it. And every turn, we're going to put that spell token directly onto the card wherever uh, we, we, we whichever, whichever spell we cast. So this time, I don't know, Steph, what do you think? I think I'd like to summon a card and see if I get one of those familiars yeah. that would that Maybe would help I'll get us blue. curse. What do you think? Yeah? Okay, yeah. great. So let's just let's summon one more card. Let's get it from the middle of the deck. Like grab one from the middle of the deck and we'll see what we get. Yeah. It's a familiar. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, great. So magic, magic. So, so that's enough for us to complete this spell. And we only check at the end of your turn. So if you, if you had one finished at the beginning of the turn, you can maybe finish two, but we're checking now and it looks like Grumpkin's completed one curse. So here's how it works. All the ritual components are, are used up. Take those and put them aside in the discard pile. They're gone. We take the curse card and we put it in the Grumpkin's play area. And that's now part of his tableau and he's got that many victory points, right? So in this case, it's five victory points. 
It's a great start for Grumpkin. Really, really good first turn to, to draw exactly the cards he needs. Now, how do you win the game? Well, we said, if you have the most points, you're going to win, but only if we finish all six curses. If we finish fewer than six curses and Professor Whisper catches us, then we're going to be in a tough spot and the kitty with the cleanest paws wins. But again, we like those toggles. We like looking for that strategic depth. So let's take a look at Grumpkin's extra credit card. It's a secret victory point condition card. And again, I might leave this out if I'm playing with kids or maybe people who've never played a hobby card game before. You can leave this out for now. But for gamers, this is a really great way to diversify and strengthen the game. This extra credits card says that Grumpkin's going to get three extra points for each pair of artifacts and scrolls left in the ritual circle, which means that he kind of wants to hoard those, right? He wants to find a way to get those and hold on to them till the end of the game. And nobody else knows why he's doing that, right? Maybe it's because he gets one point for every artifact, or maybe it's this card and it's three points for every artifact and scroll combination. So everybody's got their own extra credit card. But Steph, do you think you earn extra credit if we don't complete all the curses? No. No, right? You gotta, we, we have to finish <laughs> to get the extra credit. Otherwise, we're all going to detention. So extra credit only kicks in if we get through all of those curses. So Grumpkins turns over. Let's put out a new curse from the deck and see what the next curse looks like it's going to be. The copycat curse. Perfect. Those kitties are all over the place. Too many of them, right? This is a good middle-of-the-road curse. Remember, the possession curse is kind of hard. Balloon Kitty Curse is a little easier. It's worth only four points, but it also gets you one additional point for each potion that's in your ritual circle at the end of the game. So just like Grumpkin wants to collect scrolls and artifacts, whoever gets this card is going to want to also collect potions. But that's public information. Like, we're all going to know that you're going after those potions because they're worth those extra points, okay? Now, there is one more part of the Cleanest Pause Clause that's worth noting, which is that kittens who have more than 10 points cannot pretend to be innocent. Like, come on, you've already scored 10 points. There's no way you're not in trouble, right? So Grumpkin's also got to think about, well, do I want to get more cards? That card might be perfect because it puts him at nine points, which means he's in a place where he could win by cleanest paws. He could win by getting another curse card. He could win by getting his extra credit points. He's off to a really strong start and there's another really good curse on the board. But his first curse used up all those components, right? So he's got to start from scratch, which gives the other kittens time to catch up. Excellent. Um, and so, like, you want to be collecting these different potions and familiars, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. And you want to make sure you have the right ones, right? So let's say that Grumpkin had one more extra card in that first chapter. So if we could take the scroll card from uh, uh, Bebe over there, or sorry, the, the, yeah, th that one's perfect. Yeah, great. And put it in chapter one. If he had had that in chapter one at the beginning, then he'd have one extra component. And when he cleared that curse, that one extra component would be a negative one applied to his uh -oh. curse. He would have one extra extra ingredient and that makes the curse not as good like breaking the curse not as good and so you want to have but not could you just use it for the, the fewest could you use it for the next for the next nope, chapter it gets one if you were to... sucked up in the spell and it counts oh. as a negative and it is still removed from his play area but we would put it in his victory point tableau and say okay there's one one negative card here that counts against you. So you might want to get rid of some cards, swat them, sling them away to make sure you have the right cards. This is our game about having the right components and sometimes it's pushing right things time. off tables and pushing them onto the floor because they're not for you. <laughs> Somebody else should have them. That's right. Now you might notice that there's three chapters and we only have used the first two. And that's because one of the ways in which the game gets chaotic in front in the middle is the addition of Chaos Cat. So let's grab one of the Chaos Cat cards uh, from that stack over on the right, Nikki. Um, you can see with under Professor Whisper, where you have the, the smaller cards by the box, one of those cards yeah. is a Chaos Cat card. There's actually four in the deck. That's Professor Whisper, but here we go. That's Chaos Cat. And Chaos Cat hangs around the library and generally causes a lot of trouble. And you can put as many of these in as you want. Usually just one is the right number. When one of these is drawn, it adds a new rule to the game, right? So we draw one of these adorable Chaos Cats and it's gonna change how the game is played, right? Um, there's also a Chaos Mode that comes in the main box where you put all four in, but that's kind of wild and crazy. It's for more advanced <laughs> players, right? So let's grab one of those Chaos cards and, and let's say that the next player in, in our order here 
uh, is the one that drew it. So Grumpkin's taking his turn. He drew one card. He cast one spell. Let's go on to the next kitty. Let's say this kitty has drawn the chaos card. The first thing the chaos card does is it opens up chapter three. So we go from just having two chapters to having three chapters, which means that there's now a new curse. So let's put one more curse out there. And we have all three curses we could work on. This curse is the catnap curse. Let's put all the kitties to sleep, right? So we got to get them woken up. And again, we're going to need a couple of ritual components to do that. That's also going to open up the chapters for all of the other kitties. Now they have a third chapter. And so everybody's chapter three card is going to turn over and we get three, cha three full chapters in which they can put ritual components, right? Now this happens at different times of the game. Sometimes it happens very late. Sometimes it happens very early, but Chaos Cat is shuffled in there with all the other cards. And now, okay. in addition to all of that, we're going to put out a new rule. So grab one of the new rule cards for Chaos Cat and see what our new rule is that's going to change the game. In this case, it says, when a curse is defeated, the kitten to the left collects one of the used ritual components, their choice, before they are Ooh. discarded. So remember when Grumpkin nice. solved the curse and he broke the curse? Well, that would mean that yeah. the next kitty in the order um, would get a chance to snatch one of those ritual components up before they went into the discard pile, right? And that means that this game is going to be a little different than other games. And every game, you have a different new rule card and a different time with Chaos Cat to see where things go. So as we go look to the next player, Muffin, uh, Muffin drew the Chaos Cat card. Chaos Cat doesn't mean Muffin doesn't get a turn. So Muffin's going to draw one more ritual component and cast a spell just like Grumpkin. So let's do that real quick. See the rest of this turn. One more ritual component. It's a, it's a potion. This time potions are useful for both. I think probably chapter one again is a great thing. Two, you know, we, we've already got a familiar. We'll put it in chapter one and see if we can get there. And we're going to go kind of around in this order with each character taking their turn um, until we get to the end, right? Until we get to the end of the game. Now the end of the game happens when we either defeat all the curses or we draw Professor Whisper. And uh, if we get Professor Whisper on the screen, Professor Whisper is the very grumpy library cat who makes sure that, uh, that everything is um, uh, taken care of. That's actually Cinder. She's, she's kind of the mascot. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Professor Whisper is on one of the smaller orange cards, uh, like, uh, like the, um, the Chaos Cat cards. I think we set those to the side a minute ago. Um, and there's one more card that's the Professor Whisper card. In the real game, caught. yeah, there it is, caught, yeah. right? So when we set up the game, what we're going to do is we're going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards, and we're going to shuffle Professor Whisper into those cards. And then as we get closer and closer and closer to the end of the game, we will all know that any minute now, Professor Whisper is going to catch us, <laughs> and you'll watch Kitty start to become well, a little destructive. They start swatting ingredients other people need. They start stealing ingredients that other folks might want. And they're trying to do their best to make sure that they're not the one that gets caught, that some other kitty gets in trouble for all of these curses that got out. And they win with the cleanest pause clause, okay? So the game really works by staying simple moment to moment. Like you draw a card, cast a spell, draw a card, cast a spell. But the additional twists and turns build a really strategic, atmosphere where you're really thinking all the time about what's possible. Is it possible for me to get a couple more curses? Is it possible for me to be the kitty with the fewest uh, ritual components? What do I need to do to ensure that I clear this curse, which is going to get ritual components off my board, but then will also mean I get some points, right? And all of that happening at the same time means it's a game that, sure, kids can play and, and they're going to have a good time with because they're going to put the kitties out and move the spell token and, and have a good time making sets but that adults might find really complex and interesting because it's got a lot of surprising twists and turns as you play. Excellent. And um, you got some love for the art. Um, I love it as well because obviously it's adorable and, and kitties. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. How can, a, a... how can somebody acquire this game? That's great. Yeah. So we are, um, we, we had a really, really, really wonderful Kickstarter uh, last year where we had a whole bunch of folks support us and make this game a reality. And in fact, like, I can't say enough about our Kickstarter backers. Like they, they made it possible for us to get four different chaos cats in the game. There's really only one to start. It's such a joy to commission the other kitties. Um, and they also made it possible for us to unlock a whole bunch of other cool features uh, in the expansion set as well, which is the magical monsters expansion, which features, Ooh. uh, Van Nousing, who deals with monsters. <laughs> uh, he's an additional kitty. 
Uh, and the monsters behave kind of like curses, they, but they're more active. They might eat ingredients or come back to life after you banish them. Um, so our Kickstarter backers have been wonderful and they're getting their copies right now. We've been, we've been shipping them for over a week now and there's a lot of them. So it's, there's a lot of kittens in our warehouse that are all going out and, and going to their backers right now. Um, but it's also available for pre-order on our website. So if you go to magpiegames.com backslash wizard kittens, you can find it. Um, and we're also doing a whole bunch of other cool Gen Con events. So if you go to magpiegames.com backslash Gen Con, you can see what we're up to. Uh, but there are pre-orders available now, which can include um, the core game, the rule, uh, the the magical monsters expansion, the additional Kickstarter bonus packs. We have a few extra of those, and also a plushie that we made of Cinder, who is our mascot kitty here on the front of the box. Um, this is the special edition. You can see the gold foil, and these little oh. symbols here glow as well. So um, I'm glad that you love the art. Marissa, my co-founder, is a wonderful art director, and part of what I think was so wonderful about this project for me was watching her bring these kitties to life. Um, and we had a couple of Kickstarter backers who pledged to the level where they got to add their kitties to the game. Um, and so in the expansion, in the bonus pack, there's a whole bunch of kitties that um, are really wonderful additions for memorials in some cases and celebrations and others of the awesome kitties people have had in their lives. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so you said pre-order. Is there an estimated time of delivery for those who do pre-order? Yeah. Yeah, it should be mid-August. Like we're, we're shipping. Once the Kickstarter backers so have soon. their copies, we're going to start shipping. Yeah. Um, like I said, all of them are already in our warehouse. We have stacks upon stacks upon stacks of kittens, <laughs> um, which is a little intimidating sometimes. Um, but yeah, we're excited <laughs> to get folks their games real soon. So if you're pre-ordering, um, you know, it's a great time to, to put your order in, reserve your copy. We have had a lot of copies go out the door real fast uh, to distributors and, and retail stores this past month as folks have seen the game and tried it. Um, and so we're, we're really excited for folks to reserve their copies today and get them in August. I don't, I kind of suspect I won't have a lot of these in December. <laughs> like I, think, I think these kittens are going to go pretty fast. I agree. Now we have a few minutes. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us about Magpie Games? Any games coming out or anything else in development for Wizard Kitten? Yeah, sure. So I, I think it's this is a great product to meet us with. Um, you know, we're we're getting into the card and board game space, but we've been making tabletop role playing games for years. One of the products that we're working on right now, of course, is Root, the role playing game. Um, you know, Leader Games uh, was very generous in working with us to bring Root to tabletop role-playing. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. Again, we have a bunch of Kickstarter backers that have made that project work. Um, and we're in the middle of making uh, the role-playing game awesome. So we're working with Kyle Farron, who did the art for Root, to do the art for the, the role-playing game. Uh, we just recently released today the uh, free RPG Pelony Glade Quick Start that we released last week for Free RPG Day. And it's available on our website right now for free. Like if you like a physical copy yeah. is free if you pay for shipping, um, and so if you go to our website and check out uh, our shop, you can find the Pelaniki Glade Quick Start, which has all the rules for playing Root, six pre-generated char pre-generated characters, a new clearing, which if you're familiar with Roots, the clearings are kind of like cities and villages, so it's a new basically adventure uh, where there's a clearing that's kind of beset by politics. And you're playing vagabonds who are kind of like outlaws who wander into the clearing and get caught up in the mess. And if you're interested in getting one of those, I would really encourage you to go today and, uh, and pick one up because they are free and they're going pretty fast. We have a, a limited number that are available after Free RPG Day. Uh, and so we're, we're really excited to get them out to people, but when they're gone, they're, they're gone. I don't have any more. So if you're interested, please come check it out. Excellent. That sounds like you got a lot going on. Every a lot of people love Root, so that will be, I think, pretty huge. So that's congratulations on that. Um, and thank Wizard you. Kittens, thank you so much, Mark, for joining us today with uh, you know showing us Wizard Kittens, which is adorable. And uh, you know, congrats on Magpie Games and the success. <laughs> thank you. We've been uh, next year is our ten year anniversary, and and it does feel kind of strange to look back and. And think about, you know, like I went to my first Gen Con actually 10 years ago. Um, I, I'm, we're from New Mexico. Like, so I'm, I'm from, I joke I'm from Tatooine because there's the middle of nowhere. Um, but like we, we went to our very first Gen Con 10 years ago. Didn't really know anything about it. Walked in the door and kind of like, we're like, whoa, where, who, where are all these, where are all these people from? So <laughs> thinking about it being like almost 10 years later and being here on the show with you, doing Wizard Kittens, talking about Root. 
it really is cool to see this thing that we love that games become our our job and become a thing we get to share with fans and wizard kittens is especially exciting because there's nothing like watching people uh get to choose which kitten they get to play and be so excited to be a kitten for the 20 minutes it takes to play the game and then immediately say like but what if i played it one more time like what maybe next time i could win like I'm gonna, let's go one more time and see that kind of fun that we had at when we first played the hobby games and, and checked out card games with with other folks so thanks Absolutely. for having us on the show and and it's a weird yeah. gen con but we're really excited that it's still happening and and you guys are <laughs> yeah, part absolutely. of that so thanks a ton thank you mark enjoy gen con thanks you too